Welcome to WeekdayChurch.com. How does God show his love to us? What does he do? By the fact that we're sinners, does he just hand it out to us like candy and say, well, I overlook all your sin, and I'll just show you that I love you by saying everything you do is cute. Well, today we're going to talk about God's grace and God's mercy and explain what those are. Tomorrow we'll talk about God's justice. And sometimes it seems like those two are set against each other. But over the next couple days, hopefully we will explain rather well how they aren't. That God keeps them working together in unison. And he shows us grace and mercy and his love. But also in his love, he shows us justice too. Our opening song today is This is Amazing Grace. Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, you give us amazing grace. You love us. You care for us. We have never deserved it, but you give us your benefits. You give us your love. And God, we thank you so much that no matter how much we rebel against you, and that we just keep turning against you, God, you love us. We praise your name. Amen. I hope you enjoy the song, and I'll see you right after it's over.
most of you have probably heard really cute definitions of what grace and mercy are. For instance, with grace, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. That kind of an idea. Well, I'm just going to give you just some real basics here. Mercy is not getting the bad things you deserve. The picture I get most of the time when I think of mercy is my dad and brother loved watching WWF when I was little. You know, the fake wrestling. They were just crazy about it. And I remember the bad guys would go huddle in a corner and just get all scared and they'd hide over there and they'd get down on their knees and they'd beg for mercy and this big hulking giant was standing over him and he'd look at the crowd like, should I give him mercy? Should I give him mercy? Of course, the crowd always wanted them to beat him over the head, but you know, he'd sit back and he'd give mercy and he wouldn't just beat the guy half to death yet and then as soon as he turned around and acted like it was okay or gave him a hand up the guy would turn around and punch him right upside the head that had been kneeling down and you know you think he didn't deserve that mercy you saw it coming why did you give him mercy well once he went ahead and hit him then all holds were barred and the guy you know the good guy ended up winning and I get this idea of us sitting there saying mercy mercy and, and you know we think well but we'd never do what he did but so often we do God gives us mercy. All the bad things that we deserve. And we can say, well, once God gives us mercy, then we'll never do it again. Well, I gave my life to the Lord at 14 years old. And I'd known about the Lord, well, the whole time I've been growing up, and all the way until today. And I'd have to say, I've done more bad things since I was 14 than before I was. I've lived longer, I was older, I knew about more things, and I'm sure that's the case. And God showed me mercy before. And when I came to the cross, God showed me mercy through salvation. And even since then, God keeps showing me mercy. And I don't get the things that I deserve, all the punishments that could be coming to me. And you say, well, what's grace? Grace is getting good things that you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting the bad things that you do deserve, and grace is getting the good things you don't deserve. Could you imagine if all of a sudden, not only that wrestler huddling over there in the corner, if the guy that was the good guy, and he was fighting him, and he says, well, not only will I not hit you anymore, in fact, I'll throw the match, and I'll go give you the belt, and I'll, you know, say that you're the new champion. Well, you know, you think, wow, why would he do that? Well, that, that would be grace, giving him something that he doesn't deserve, you see. Well, God wasn't that way with us. In Romans 5, in verse 8, though, it says that that's exactly the way it was. But God shows his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for us while we were still bad guys. We hadn't had to clean ourselves up get our lives right, and then come to Jesus. I see this regularly as I preach and talk to people or witness to people, that they'll say, you know, once I get my life straightened up a little bit, then I'll come to Jesus. Well, we don't have to do that. He wants us to come to Him while we're still a mess. That's how He takes us. When we're still all messed up and still living in sin and don't care very much about Him, the Holy Spirit starts convicting our hearts, and He's not saying, I want you to clean it up. Because if we could do that, we wouldn't need grace and mercy. If we could have been saved by our own works, if we could have been saved by keeping the law, Jesus wouldn't have needed to come to die for us. But we did need grace and mercy. And you say, well, what do we do then if we need grace and mercy? Well, it says in Matthew 5, verses 43 through 45, You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. So you say, how do we show grace and mercy? Well, just being nice to your friends, or giving a present to someone who gives a present to you, or being kind to those who are kind to you, well, that's no different than anybody else. To be like God, what Jesus is telling us is we need to not only love those who love us, but love those who come against us. Love those who hate us. Give grace and mercy to those who don't deserve it. Why? Because God gave it to us when we didn't deserve it. And so often, even as his children, we still sin and rebel and turn against him, and we don't deserve it, and God forgives us, as we see in the story of the prodigal son. So what do you do? You do the same thing. God said that if you want to be forgiven, you must forgive others. Give grace to the undeserving. And I know the questions that often come with this. 
They haven't deserved it. But we just talked about that. You didn't deserve it when God gave grace and mercy to you. And still he gave it. So he asked you to follow in his footsteps and give grace and mercy to those difficult, stubborn, hard-hearted, mean people that you deal with in your family, at your work. And you say, well, okay. Not only that. You say, they'll hurt me again. They might. They really might hurt you again. They may come at you again. You can say, if I forgive them, all they'll do is do it again. And if I forgive them, that just gives them permission to do that. That doesn't give them permission to do that. They may choose to do that again. And Peter said, well, how many times do I have to forgive somebody, Jesus? Just seven times? Then can I whack them over the head? And Jesus said, no, not seven times. But 70 times seven. You can say, well, I don't want to. I think that's probably the most honest answer, is I don't want to forgive this person. I don't want to show them grace and mercy. I want to hold them accountable and beat them over the head and have my vengeance. But God has said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, thus saith the Lord. You can say, well, they haven't even asked for forgiveness. And God doesn't give us forgiveness if we don't ask for forgiveness. So do I have to give them forgiveness even if they don't ask? My advice to you would be this. Give them forgiveness anyways. They may never know it. I'm not saying you go knock on their door and act obnoxious and say, well, I forgive you, because that's just a way of rubbing their nose in what they've done to you. All I'm saying is in your heart, forgive them. It will free not only them, but it will free you so that you're not bound by the anger and hate that you have against this person, and it sets you free from what they've done to you. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that we will be people who exhibit grace and mercy. That we will give it to those who don't deserve it, who may not even ask for it from us, and so look like your son. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our closing song is Every Move I Make. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you again tomorrow.